Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 283. May 21st? That just feels weird. All right, it's May 21st. Uh, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Uh, this is, I think, our first monthly meeting, and I think it's gonna work out all right. So let's talk about what we're gonna talk about. Uh, if you're here, go ahead and say hi, Bert and Jacob, welcome. Um, GitHub discussions is down, we'll talk a little bit about why. Um, then we'll do issue triage and then we'll talk about uh, answer questions, things that other people want to talk about. So let's just jump right into the discussions. Uh, we got attacked Sunday into Monday where lots and lots and lots of different uh, spam account, different bot accounts, I guess, posted about 300 messages. I thought it was registered at 50, I counted wrong, uh, but there's like 300 of them. Uh, so to stop the attack, and to make it easy to clean up, we I just took discussions offline, you know, unchecked the box so it's not there anymore. Um, opened a ticket with GitHub saying, hey, can you please remove all of these tickets uh, since this timestamp and remove everything after that? Because the only option they provide in the UI is to delete one discussion at a time, and that will take forever to do for 300, so we're not doing that. So after they clean it all up, we'll bring discussions back and uh, we'll do this until the next one, I guess. And if this happens more often, I expect GitHub probably will be a little bit more proactive about um, tackling these things or preventing them or something. Um, but it, to, to, to be fair, there were a lot of different accounts used, um, several different accounts used, so it's a, it was a different kind of shape of an attack. Um, I wonder if they're practicing for something bigger because a lot of the accounts that I kind of went and poked at were fake accounts of like people that looked almost real and it had like commits over time and stuff. So uh, we just might be seeing more of the XZ stuff, you know, happening all over the place. I don't know, but it's creating more trouble than it's worth. So that's the state of discussions. When GitHub cleans it up, we'll come back and uh, do it again. Uh, Jacob, do they have captures an option? Well, these accounts have been around for a while. I think at least a year. Most of them that I clicked through, I think have been around for a year and it had small things all around. So it's like they built up a number of these accounts over time. So they looked kind of normal. In fact, a couple of my clicked on looked like Microsoft employees, but they, they claimed to be part of Microsoft, but they weren't actually in the Microsoft org, which made things even more interesting. Um, so uh, that was, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but this looked a little bit more uh, concerted than uh, the average, you know, someone just running a script against things. So I- At least at the beginning, I, I was seeing freshly created accounts. Yeah, it was the ones I clicked on some of the ones later. And I was like, wow, yeah, these okay. these cats have been around for a while. So yeah, yeah it's true. it's and and they had pictures and they were like, I don't know what's going on. Um it's it's uh pretty pretty crazy. Uh, I don't know what GitHub's gonna have to do. Uh, so anyway, there's that. Of course, Jacob, there's also an API. So I, I think they probably went through the API. At least I think there's an API for doing discussions. So you could go through that too. Anyway, uh it's down. GitHub is, we saw them starting to block accounts and things like that. So we just need to go through and clean it up because they do not provide a mass cleanup button. So uh, it's, we're gonna need them to go do that because the UI is painful. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> Too much work. Anyway, so that's the state of this GitHub discussions. It's a mess. By the way, we're not the only one. I saw several other people complaining about this. Uh, not several, I saw many other people complaining about this. So we were not the only discussions. Hit. There are many of them. That doesn't make me feel better. It just makes me think that this is a bigger problem. Uh, but maybe GitHub will take it uh, more seriously. Anyway, uh, it'll come back when they fix it. Basically, it comes out to. It. So let's go do the parts that are part of Wix. Let's go do triage. Bob, you ready? Uh, sure. Sure. All right. Cool. Um. Okay. Coming over here. Uh, we have a month's worth of issues, and this is pretty good. Not too many, so I think we are uh, doing all right. Top one, 8173 Building Wix from our very own Jacob, having issues getting things built. This went back and forth a little bit. In the end, Jacob said something about um, ARM64 tools, not the ARM build tools. Is that all that was needed in the end, Jacob, was to click the ARM64 tools? But it feels dirty. Having to have ARM64, having to have MSVC, like having to install all these things.
Okay. So I don't. All right. So I guess we keep this issue uh, open. I'll, it's kind of more of a discussion, but there's no discussion place to have it right now. So we'll just kind of keep uh, poking at it. I don't know what to tell you. I just turned on the things and it's possible we're missing something from the list. If so, we should get it added to the list. Um, but I thought that list was pretty good um, to get things building. So, all right. Uh, do we give us a Jacob and he can let us know if anything needs to be changed in the readme to get things building in the end? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Jacob's here. He goes, wait, what? No, not me. Uh, but yeah, like in the end, I think it's just a matter of getting the readme updated so it does the right thing. This person down here complaining, I saw that they wanted to get, they were trying to get Wix 3 building, which is like nobody cares about building Wix 3. So yeah, right. Oh. Yeah, I'm but, interested in the NuGet thing. I, I'm, I'm not familiar with what that's about. Yeah, so I know. All right. I got to work, but the one repo, but the one in the repo wasn't working, but when I put the same config in the user local config. Well, if you have a user config, you can mess up your your other configs. So that's something. That's strange. Because I don't have a user config for that very reason, because it messes with global things. Yeah, I, I delete mine. <laughs> so I don't have anything that, that confuses things. So, all right, cool. So I think the ARM64 was a big thing. Okay, I don't, that should not be necessary. So that would be something to look at. Okay. Yeah, can, can you can you attach? Yeah, I don't understand local, that. Or whatever, yeah, whatever you had to change, attach that and we'll... I don't know, shouldn't have been a problem. A pine, a opine on it. Yeah. All right, so something about NuGet there, but at least the build structure is good. All right, um, 8178. When Burn is installed using a service account without administrative privileges, they fail to run in interested mode. So something about the lockdown to prevent uh, one of the attack vectors doesn't work correctly when run through a service account. And I suppose I could kind of see that happening. Like the... I'm, I'm struggling with that one. The, it, it, it's, checking for, it's checking for a particular token, as I recall, that check. Mm -hmm. So why would it be true for one of these managed service accounts, but not actually have it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, so anyway, this can go for grabs. The person wants to go dig into it. Uh, it'll be interesting because service accounts aren't very popular, but they, uh, they're used sometimes. So they can go dig into it and see if they want to fix it. Then they can go for grabs. It's interesting. Definitely be fascinating to understand what's going on with their service and what might have to get tweaked around and burn, what they might have to do there. But yeah, yeah. up for grabs for burn. Interesting. Um, 8180, software tag should pass NIST tool. Um, apparently the NIST tool wants this ancient, stupid XML laying attribute and it's a warning. Oh, some are warnings fail on that. Our minor. Cool. So if someone wants to go in and fix a SWID tag, it should be pretty easy. Um, then they can make that happen. I think they go for up grabs. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, great. Someone could fix that. That's not even a hard one to fix. Probably, uh, Wix format eight, one, eight, one. Where's format saved in the wrong place? This is so weird, this WSX thing. I'm gonna just type, ah, oh, he got it right here. Maybe a typo. Um, and yep, yeah, looks like a straightforward, straightforward fix. I think it was a straightforward fix. And I think Bob, you took the PR to save the file correctly instead of not providing a path. I was like, it was missing a file name or something. Oh, right? sorry, I'm, it's, closed. it's already closed. Um, yep. Yes. Yep, so cool, that was good. All fixed. Format tool can now save in place. All right, 8199, uh, remove folder EX and V4. Didn't do something. Oh, right. The, oh, is the remove files action was missing? Yeah, the, this, yeah, the root of the problem mm. is remove that file, remove I file. believe in in Wix 3, you got remove the standard action remove files. Uh, as referenced? 
in a case where in V4 and V5, it, it does not automatically come in. All right. um, okay. It comes in sense. as soon as you have a file. So sure. it was well masked because, well, how many actual installers have zero files? Yeah, cool. Um, there cool. is a bit of um, a bad log message that comes in because of the the recursion fix recently. So I will, uh, I'll, I'll take this one to okay. clean it up a bit. All right. Sounds fine. 8205, whisk convert fails when leading tag defines encoding. That's kind of surprising. But I didn't think X document cared. I didn't either, but it sounds like something someone could look into if they wanted. You can go ahead and toss that up for grabs. It wouldn't be that hard to jump in and look at that bug. These are like easy bugs that anybody could kind of pick up if they wanted to. It's very easy to debug and get into, write a test for. It's all, yeah, all those convert yeah. bugs are very nice, easy bugs for people that want to hop up and the, you know, start getting started in Wix. 8208, paralyze update files facades command. So they have 30,000 files. Oof. 100 instance transforms? Woof. That's a lot of instance transforms. I guess if you're using instance transform, 100 to be safe. Okay, but it takes an hour spent in update files commands. That's really strange. It would take that long in update file facades. I guess it's hashing. If you have a lot of un 30,000 files that are unversioned, I guess sure, you would get yeah. there. If you have 30,000 files, 29,500 are not going to be versioned. Probably true. Um, waiting on the antivirus? Well, then tell your antivirus to stop s scanning your source tree. All right, anyway. Um, so you'll get a lot of speed if you don't have your antivirus scanning your build tree, which I think is what the dev drive does for you by default these days, which is very one of the things, things. Yeah. yeah, one of the things, like, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, but a custom version of Wix where he did it in a parallel for each loop, uh, resulted in a build time around nine minutes on a 12 core machine instead of an hour. Yeah, all right, cool. I suppose we could take a look at it. Yeah, we could send the I could send a PR for that, I guess. See what it looks like. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how parallelized. Not something I ever thought would need to be parallelized since if it's hashing, it's not like it's disk IO, but maybe, I guess. Yeah, but that's the the blessing of SSDs. Yeah, it's true that they catch up fast, don't they? Yeah. Hyper especially yeah, see, it's gonna probably if you know like if this is a web thing which is where you get a lot of files, especially if they're small files see that's probably what it is it's probably lots and lots of small files and he's just getting killed by the antivirus so his disk io is is killing him so being able to open many 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 files where the hashing takes no time i mean yeah, it kind of makes sense. I guess we could see what it looks like and how it goes, because I mean, I I don't know that this could be worse if you have bigger files um, on a normal drive, but I guess we could see what it looks like. Yeah, all right, we can see what it looks like. Yep. Um, eight two one one adapt to lack of v one four seven vc tool set on GitHub Actions. Oh, so they've removed one four one. One four one is two thousand. Everything other than the so. Yeah, you can look at the link bugs. The the oh, you opened that. It's okay. really annoying um, because you know we took a lot of grief for the fact that in weird scenarios, updating Wix on these images was problematic um, for VS twenty twenty two back in the day. Uh huh. Um, but they apparently don't mind breaking people using the older tool set. I'm not bitter. Uh, basically. The, the VS installer has a bunch of bugs about how it updates the, the you know, the call it Sentinel files that let you pick and choose different tool sets when you launch the, the developer build prompt. And because of that, well, the people maintaining the images are just like, oh, okay, cut them all. So, um, as of a week or two ago, the only tool sets are the latest one. So um, we so, either can install the older ones at build time as we did in the past. Oh, that was that was lots of failures. Yeah, that was lots of failures. Though. I mean, yeah, it's not 
it, well, and and the build time is terrible. and the build time. It didn't. It was. It was better than I expected. Um, undoubtedly, you know they're pretty close to the CDN for Visual Studio, but um, the alternative is that we dump our use of the 2017 outputs. Hmm. We chose that because it was compatible with 2017, 2019, and 2022. Right. We go to 2022 only. I can't speculate and don't, I'm not entirely sure how I actually would be set up to test this, what happens with the native libraries. To be clear, this is only about the native libraries. <sighs> The problem, the big issue, is that right now we can't build Wix at all. Hold so, on, Wix just fails to build now. Yeah, yeah. And if we use twenty twenty two, we don't know if those libraries will be able to work with twenty nineteen, for example. Correct. Twenty seventeen maybe less worried about but, but they put well, 2019 yeah. as well so right it, we chose 2017 because it was explicitly compatible oh did they drop that later they stopped doing that later no 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 uh, sorry oh. 2017 is forward compatible right with 2019 and 2022 right there was no guarantee made that i know of that 2022 was no, wait, for, uh, sorry, I always get those mixed up. Whatever, there's no guarantee that you can consume, sorry, there was no guarantee made by the VC team that you could go from 2022 and consume it in 2017 or 2019. Or 2019, yeah, and that's the problem. Yeah. Hmm. Pick the lowest common denominator and it works because it was designed to, but you can't do that anymore. Or we could, if we had saw them at build time and risk blowing out the build time. And of course, all the failures that can happen. <laughs> uh, interesting. Now, one nice thing is that, you know, thanks to NuGet, I can't believe I said that. Thanks to NuGet, you can you know more easily reference older versions. You can mix and match Dutil, for example, you know with whatever other you you don't have to match, right? So we can say okay in Wix six, you need twenty twenty two or later. But if you need Dutil for twenty seventeen, well Wix five is still available, right? Or Deodal V5 is still available. Uh, yeah, but it means we can't build Wix 5 or Wix 4 or Wix 3.14. Well, we can never build 3.14. True. We can't build 4 or 5 at this point. You, either, then. And, and I actually noticed, noted that at the, uh, mm -hmm. at the bottom. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lovely. Yeah. Everybody's just trying to make this harder on us. They do seem to hate us. Hmm. I don't know. We're going to get, I think, a lot more failures if we try to install the C runtimes. If we try to install stuff through Visual Studio at, at build time. That, I mean, that is what happened. I see no reason why it would stop. It would have stopped happening. Yeah, it was just... Plus, we, yeah, because we also would pick up... Because you can't install without picking up the new features, so they end up kicking all their right. updates as well. So you end up getting right. restarts and stuff. 
inside Visual Studio. Yeah. It's really, really hard to put these tools on the machines, given the way that Visual Studio works. Yep. Which really pushes you towards, all right, I guess we're just cutting the tail. GitHub has said, cut the tail. So that's what we have to do here. Well, uh, so I, I'm going to go ahead and make my suggestions, which are we should drop this approach for Wix 6. And then, I don't know. <laughs> for okay. going forward, going forward, we should not try to build an older version, given the the you know, the decree from the GitHub Actions folks. Um, yep. You know, it, to an extent, until we, uh, until unless we give up on the Actions runners hosted builds, we kind of have to you know, adapt to their their model yeah it goes back to the whole maybe we should just host our own and all the problems that come with that and all the problems that come with that what? there there are no nice solutions here no. thank you, you no know, everything's ex so. everything's expensive everything is expensive right now it is um and i'm i'm you know i'm concerned i don't know what to do about the the four and five problem building wix v4 v5 you know, it's like, well, we can't cut them off like we did, like we could do going forward. Um, I mean, we could. I, we could. I don't know that I want to take that that approach, but we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. Or we could, just, you know, script the installation and hope that we're not doing frequently we're not doing frequent v4 and v5 builds. Um, uh, yeah, until we get the, the Visual Studio update that comes out on that Tuesday that we need to build yeah. on a Wednesday, and right. then we're rebooting the, the agent machine. What a pain. Yep. All right, we're going to have to go sit and thing about this one i don't know that i don't have good ideas <laughs> i need to i need to sit down with a piece of paper enumerate all the options and then right. start going back and right. but yeah. you're right. we, we there, there are actually plenty this. of ideas but they're all pretty bad yeah okay all right we're going to fix this all right thank you very much very much all right you're welcome eight two one two seven Short reference for GUID variables. Oh, and GUID variables is not allowed. Ah, this right. is just an XSD thing. This is an XSD thing. Um, yep. If you don't want it, I'll take it. We should get this fixed. I don't know when we rolled out, but we should get that fixed. So if you don't want it, I'll take it. Hey, there we go. Got it. Um, 8526, page not found slash documentation. Okay. What link I, to it? What? Like, yeah. That, yeah, that, that, it doesn't that, exist. Important. That's an important thing. That URL hasn't worked in ages. Yeah. Okay. Let, we'll just close this. I'm not spending time. Like they didn't say where it came from. We don't care. It's like, yeah. Thanks. Next. If you told us where we linked from, then we could do something. But you didn't. So tough. Right. Not a bug. Carry on. Okay. Don't care. So don't care. All right. Okay. That's the issues for today. After. Uh, a month, the hardest one in there is <laughs> GitHub breaking us. So that will be fascinating. All right. So with that in mind, next meeting will be a month from now. This seems to be working out okay. So if I did my math correct, people should uh, check that. Because um, I, th I think we basically said the third Tuesday of the month is what we're shooting for, which if I looked correctly is June 18th. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that'll be a month from now. Jacob wants to talk about the cert issue. Do we have, um, a number for that, Jacob? Like, cause then we could bring it up and talk about it if you want. Oh, do we have any docs or comments on the intent? <laughs> the bug is, yeah, the bug is signed to you. So on the intent, I mean, no, I think it's old enough that 
we should we we can define the intent and goal at this point. It 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 was in Wix too. Oh gosh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And it didn't work back then. No, no, same thing. Oh. It's it's okay. that you know block of of commented out code. Okay. Okay. I, I, at this point, we get to decide what we want it to mean because it hasn't done anything since apparently the beginning of time. Um, I mean, the only thing before that was Wix one, and I the custom actions may have existed in Wix one because that's that's really really old stuff that we were using to configure the Microsoft Office online servers way back when, like the original. Watson crash reporting things and stuff like that. So, um, and nobody's changed the code since that. So we're talking 2000, 2001, two, maybe one or two. The idea was for online certs, but the bug itself was for an offline PFX. Yeah, there was, there was code in there as I recall, for requesting a cert. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was stuff for that. And that never happened. Yeah, I, I think that only works in really special cases, which may have been true in the office data center way back when. I'm sure it's not now. Right. So if the spirit of the code, then the bug won't be fixed. Right, so, I mean, if it shouldn't, then the, the fix is to remove the overwrite feature, right? To deprecate it and then remove it, or the overwrite attribute feature. Right, because it doesn't do anything. Like that's the fix, then, right? If I understand correctly. I mean, yeah. So if the answer is yeah, overwriting isn't a thing. It's like, all right, well, there we go. That answers that. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yes, that's it. Like, unless the goal is to make it implemented, right, and go, okay, here's how overriding certificates should work. That's another option. But if it's not going to work ever, then it'd be like, all right, cool. Problem solved. Well, I mean, I have to deprecate the attribute and and then the XSD and then let it sit for a little bit. But I mean, at least then it'll be pretty clear where it's going. That, you know, if the feature can't be implemented, which is, I, I guess, is the problem. Like it's implementing an well, override of... Yeah, that, that's a split, problem. right? It, it, uh, stuff that leads to unimplemented features because I know that this isn't the only one. Um, we've had this in the past, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, we should oh it was in it was in close apps. Oh we had an attribute close apps that didn't do what it said. Well yes yeah at some point there was a there, there was a hope maybe that close apps could do UI. Oh. And so there's there's code at least Pretty sure in both the custom action and the extension that's commented out or if deft out or whatever that like here do this, but it's one of those. How would that have worked anyway? Okay, yeah. So yeah, Jacob. There's like yeah, it, it's fine if you say at this point. Yeah, we get to define what it is now, like, and it's old enough and ancient enough that. They, like, look, this doesn't make any sense. Then we should, you know, put on the path to removing it. Totally fine with that. Especially things that were never implemented. Yeah, yeah. And that's like, oh no, here's how you would implement. That makes sense. And da da da. And like, okay, great, do that. Like, nope, not implementable. We should never expose it. Great, then let's do that. I, like, it, that's where I'm at on that feature. Then it's just. Updating the compiler extension to warn either fail immediately or or yeah well no we should just deprecate it yeah yeah just deprecate it 
be like, this doesn't work. This didn't work, doesn't work, it's going away. Don't use this attribute. And then have the SSD say the same thing. So anybody trips across it, be like, ah, oh, doesn't do what I want. Okay, it's still here for anybody that had it turned on and didn't do anything. We don't break them right away. And then at some point, yeah, it goes away. Do you actually have to mark it deprecated in the compiler? Or can we yes. just document the deprecation? Well, usually, we, I, usually we deprecate into the compiler. So if your code hits, it doesn't break right out the gate. It just, you start getting this warning. It says, hey, this doesn't work anymore or it's going away. Or well, like that. I don't think we, I'm, I'm trying to think. I don't think we've had a case like this where this thing never worked. Do we, sorry, do we need to warn that we're going to remove something that didn't work? Yeah, because if they had no, like, I mean, that, that it's just, I don't, I mean, someone explicitly said no, and now the actual disappears. I don't and you get an error. Yeah, that it you doesn't want the, exist. You want the deprecation error. I um, guess, yeah. Okay. The deprecation okay. warning for a while. I, it feels like it's the right thing to do. It, it, <laughs> it, well, yes. Um, sorry, I, I was trying to save a step because, you know, at some point, stuff that was deprecated needs to get removed. And okay. we don't always, you know, like, what, should we do that every release? Yeah, I go through and look at it. So uh, sometimes I only do it for two releases. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, I went through and okay. deleted a bunch of things in five. Not a bunch. A few. Because there weren't many that I was like, ah, I'm not going to remove right, the four right. things yet. So yeah. I left them. Okay. And, you know, so, yeah. So, yeah, just go through. And I, I look for deprecated every once in a while. And go, yeah. Okay. This can go. The, okay. So then, yeah, just yeah. use the their existing warnings and errors, I think, for deprecation. There's a warning. Yeah. Lessons. yeah. Just so look for something else that's deprecated. Be like, yeah. Makes it easy to scrub. Totally. Okay. Very easy. Don't uh, create a new deprecation message or anything like that. Just right, use right. the one that already exists. And it's very simple. It's like you pass the element, you pass the attribute in, it automatically gets the name for you, does all the work. So very simple. Cool. Good question. Easy. Um, other things, stuff going on. People want to talk about stuff going on out there. Um, I guess I should update this slide to include the, the next meeting date. Maybe I should do that. I'll do that next time if I remember, <laughs> but yeah. So next meeting questions, comments, and then put the next meeting here. Um, cause so it's on the screen longer. Well, yeah. And it's like, this is what we're working towards. Cause usually I'm like chilling out here, making sure that we get all the questions as I try to figure out what two weeks from now is. Uh, but now that it's a month, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's a month. We should plan for that. Uh, easy things like that. So it's just getting into a new rhythm of things. Um, and stuff like that. But I don't see any other questions coming out. I think we got Jacob's um, handled. He ended up with a lot less code to write after doing lots of investigation, which is cool. Thank you for doing the investigation. And um, yeah, so we'll be back in a month. I think that's that. Anything else, Bob? Uh, nope. All right, cool. So this is good. A month, and we are able to get through all our stuff. Uh, I'll bring GitHub discussions back as soon as GitHub figures out how to clean up, because it's a mess. And uh, we will be back here in four weeks. Same time, same place. Basically, third Tuesday of June, day 18th. Till then, you guys take it easy. See you later. Bye. Bye.